Okay, now I would like to introduce to the stage the Police Chief of White Plains, uh, Mr. Joseph Castelli. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Joe Castelli. I am the Chief of Police for the City of White Plains. Uh, I've been there for 33 years almost and the Chief for just about uh, three and a half years. Um, I certainly want to uh, thank um, um, ISERM and um, the President and, and Spencer McNair for reaching out uh, to invite um, somebody from law enforcement uh, to uh, attend this conference. Certainly uh, your offices have uh, relocated in White Plains and we appreciate uh, the opportunity to work together. Um, I also want to say, so just a little background, I have three kids, um, and um, they keep me very humble. They have never been overly impressed or impressed at all that I am the chief of police. But um, looking at the cover and the, and the, the, uh, the lineup for uh, the conference this, uh, these last three days, I'm listed under distinguished speeches, and I, I certainly know uh, Councilman Boykin from, from professionally from years back in White Plains, he is definitely a distinguished speaker, but this might actually crack my kids to, to re be impressed with me. So again, I thank you very much. Um, I, I, I hope I live somewhat up to that, that, um, that designation that you've given me. Um, and the second reason why I'm a little humbled is, you know, International Center for Ethno-Religious Mediation um, I, again, I looked at the lineup, and some of the the topics are, are certainly um, weighty and and you know worldwide. So I, I thought about you know so how do how does the local police department fit in? And what got me was the title in the conference about conflict resolution and peace building, and that's. That's sort of what, what said, well, this is something that is extremely interesting and, and relevant to local law enforcement. Um, so it's really a thing that got my attention. You know, White Plains, uh, like any other police department, um, is not a perfect entity. Uh, any other organization, not a perfect entity. But we try, we, we, we've had this history, and at least going back to when I started, of trying to be a community-oriented uh, police department. Um, we're always trying to uh, improve and look for better ways to serve the community. Um, much of law enforcement is about resolving conflict and building peace. Um, on any given day, uh, an officer can be called to deal with uh, a verbal argument, a physical fight, a car accident, um, customer dispute. So on that level, um, conflict resolution is part of our daily duties. Um, to the extent that when we're the outside party, we are the uh, fixer, so to speak. It, it's, a, it's a little easier. It's not an easy thing to do ever, I don't think, but it's easier. The second part of it is when we are part, directly a part of the conflict or the potential conflict, when there may be an issue with, with the police and, and the interaction of the community with the police. And it's just something that we, uh, you know, has to be acknowledged, uh, especially in these, uh, you know, the challenges that, that we've faced over the last several years. Um, so, There are two things I think. How does White Plains? How does White Plains handle these things? How do we? How do we seek to be um, good um, resolvers of conflict, whether we're part of it or not? Um, and the simple, the simple answer I think is for us is is two things: um, partnerships and training. Um, we can't live in a bubble. Um, we we certainly do want to understand that. Um, and we don't want, we want to understand that law enforcement is not separate from the community. We're not above it. We should be a, a part of the community, an active part of the community. Uh, 
Excuse me. Um, so, just dealing with some of the the so speaking of training, um, and and again, Legislator Boykin touched on some things at the at the uh, county level. Uh, for White Plains, uh, again, there's there's multiple agencies as Westchester County. I am speaking for White Plains. Uh, in a broader sense, I'd like to think that I could speak for much of law enforcement that we all strive to do these things. Um, but uh, I certainly am, I do think White Plains is one of the, uh, the best police departments in um, Westchester County, at least. I have to, I certainly have to think that, have pride in what, in my department. But again, a lot of what I am seeing is that law enforcement is striving to uh, continually evolve, uh, especially, again, a uh, after some of the, the, the police reform and things that have come about over the last couple of years um, to make sure that we are providing uh, exemplar service to the community. Uh, and, and just as an example, um, and this is not new, I don't, uh, most of this uh, White Plains has been um, doing for a while. Uh, and what I mean years and years and years, but we have a great relationship with El Centro Hispano. We have a great relationship with The Loft, which is, um, uh, s serves the uh, advocates for the uh, LGBTQ community. Um, my sister's place, which deals with violence, especially domestic violence. We work with n all the religious institutions within White Plains. Um, we are, uh, to, uh, our police chaplains, two are um, Baptist ministers and one is a Buddhist um, reverend, um, all of which are in our community. We work with the, uh, um, um, any institution that um, uh, reaches out to us and, and, and would like some information, certainly on safety too, on their, on their properties. We work with them in partnerships. Um, Westchester Seniors, Westchester um, Independent Living for our, our seniors. We work very closely with the White Plains Youth Division, uh, Youth Bureau for services to our children. Rockland Media Mediation Center, when it's appropriate. Uh, we refer residents to an outside mediation, so uh, maybe we don't have to continue to go to this call. There, there's, there's, there's not a need for the police to be involved. Um, and maybe gives people another option in, instead of calling us. But I understand that sometimes people are hesitant to, to call the police. Um, local, local again, local community. If you're if you're local, the Slater Center is a is a well-respected local uh, community organization. And again, other are down right down to the individual neighborhood organizations that we partner with, uh, we talk to, we we exchange ideas back and forth. The, the other thing is our training. And, and White Plains has always, and I'm not saying this, I, 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 when I took over, uh, became chief three years ago, I inherited a, a, uh, a pretty good department. I was very fortunate. Training has always been a strong suit for White Plains. Uh, we've always seen the value in trying to give our officers as many tools as we possibly can. So there are mandated trainings, yearly trainings that we we have to do it. It, it meant much of it is of the legal and technical sort. We also look to provide training to our officers that uh, has, um, you know, uh, the local touch, so to speak. Um, and, and what I mean by that is to build awareness and empathy within our community. Um, we do a lot of mental health. Uh, instruction. We do uh, disability instruction, um, health conditions. We, we, we instruct our officers about signs of various um, medical um, afflictions so that way to hopefully to identify them. Uh, again, we talk about LGBT. We have religious institutions come in to, to talk. And again, it's, the, it's the, the people who identify as a part of that group who come in and talk to us. It's not police teaching police, it is an individual who can speak honestly to us about their experience as a member of whatever group and living in White Plains and their experiences and more specifically their experiences with 
if there, if there are any of the White Plains Police Department, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So that way, you know, we can learn um, from somebody who's actually living it and not our own interpretations of what we think is going on. The goal being to build an understanding of the different people living in our community, build an understanding of what they may be experiencing, building that empathy and under understanding. That's part of the goal in a lot of this training. It's great to know about if somebody has this medical condition, but it's more better to un just understand that, that somebody has, um, may not act as we may deem appropriate in, in certain circumstances, and there may be reasons for that. One of, one, of, um, one of the best examples I have of that, and it's a very simple thing, you know, uh, last year, so we do, we do training every year, 35 hours of training for every officer at minimum, um, and where we, we look for the different topics to, to provide, especially like this, this, uh, this empathy building um, topic. And, and wouldn't you know it, some, this kid comes in, 12, 13 year old kid comes into the office, literally comes into, into the police station and asks to speak with me. And he happens to have, um, he uh, lives with Tourette syndrome. Very quickly, I don't know the ins and outs, but I know that some of the, the, the uh, issues with Tourette's is it, it may have physical tics, physical spasms, verbalizations that are uncontrollable. And, and you know, for young, young kids especially who, who have this can be very uh, awkward and, and, and really tear at, at the confidence and the ability to, uh, you know, uh, uh, grow as a teenager. Well, this kid um, did not have any of that. Um, he had he had all the, the the physical maybe attributes is not the right word but he had the physical signs of Tourette's but he was very outgoing and he he his explanation was that he was walking in his neighborhood and he saw a police car who had pulled over another car and there was no issue with anything the police officer did but he started thinking I'm going to be driving soon when I start driving. And if I get pulled over and I have a, a spasm or um, uh, a seizure or something along those lines, I'm worried that the police won't understand what's happening. And they might not act in a way that um, they normally would if they had some information. 13-year-old kid, and it knocked me for a loop because that's exactly the type of, of stuff that we are looking for. He's a resident. Uh, he came to us. I mean, it's, it's how, how hard, I mean, understanding the relationships that, that people can have with police and, and where the authority and, and, and that for this young kid, and he did come with his mom, but he did everything. He did the whole pitch and everything else. And for him to, to come forward and, and with this idea, and then he proceeded to do a video uh, with him doing all the instruction, all of, of his, you know, his name is Noah, and, and in the video it certainly came out that the, 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 the Tourette syndrome evinced itself in it. So, and officers saw this on a, on a weekly basis. And not only that, when, when Noah could make it into the training, personally, he came into the training. Um, and I could tell you this, it was extremely well received by our officers. And it's not so much that um, we have a high incidence of people who, who are afflicted with Tourette syndrome in White Plains, but it is absolutely the understanding of the different people in our community, the differences that we will see, and understanding that, that not everybody is going to act or behave like we think they should or what the, the norms are, um, and, and that sh is okay. It gives our officers tools to maybe understand the situation and make different decisions, slow things down, and, and be able to then help somebody better. Um, so it was just a great example of that over and above the, the actual knowledge we gained about this condition. Um, so it's just one of those examples that I always bring up. Um, he's since gone on to train at, at the Westchester County Academy, and he's, he's an ambassador 
to Tourette syndrome and is looking to make a, 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 um, a wider awareness program. And I'm his biggest supporter. Uh, I, I backed him up since then. Um, and, and again, I just think it's one of those things that, that stands out. Um, <clears throat> the, the, um, as police, we, we obviously don't always interact with people when they are at their best. It's stressful. They're calling us for a reason. There's maybe, again, some type of, of conflict. Uh, a, a lot of what we are trying to do is to, again, um, teach our officers that um, our community is made up of, of different uh, groups, and it's not the, um, it's, it, it is in our interest to try to understand as much as possible about these different groups so that we may better serve them. Um, we, we're just, again, looking for the tools to give our officers uh, uh, so that way uh, they can assess a situation. We all talk about situational awareness, and it's maybe more of a, a, a maybe a tactical phrase, but it, for me, as, as a trainer, and I've been, along with being a police officer, I've been involved in our training for, for a long time. The situational awareness is, is going on, on something or, or interacting with somebody and understanding as best you can exactly what's going on. If you're wearing the uniform, how best can I help that person? What's going on that, that helps me, that helps me, uh, that can help me help them better? Um, and, and, the second part of this is, is so understanding um, b empathy building and understanding the differences and the individualities of a person or a group I think is extremely important. But there's the second part of this. And, and this is where I think it ties in. I don't think that, that what I'm about to say is anything groundbreaking. I think if this is a center for um, um, conflict resolution and mediation, I, but this is the real crux because I think it's easy to recognize our differences. To, to, and again, a lot of it is on the face, just the visual re looking at somebody, we see differences. Um, it is the, the seeking out the things that, that the commonalities and the sim similarities that we share, regardless of where we're from or who we are or what we look like, uh, you know, the ties that, that bind. It, it's, it's much harder to do because you, we do have to want to do that. But, um, you know, making a connection with somebody on sports or literature or travel or where you're from or where you were from or where you want to go, um, uh, your religion, your, your orientation, whatever, whatever it could be to say, okay, this person may not be like me in this regard, but this is how they're like me. Like, this is how we are similar. This is something that we share in common. This is something that, that in White Plains, we, we try to work into a lot of our training. Um, it, it's very similar to, you, you know, conflict resolution. We do um, de-escalation. Um, so we don't really, we teach a little bit about de-escalation, but we weave it into everything else we do so that way we, we understand that let's try to de-escalate a situation, slow it down, and act, it gives us more options to act better. The same way we try to weave this, this, this empathy building and this seeking out of commonalities and, and stuff into our training to try to teach officers to be, again, part of the community, not just police in the community, not just seen as an enforcers um, and outside of, of the community. Um, I just, uh, certainly, I'm sorry, I, I am a little old school, I, I lost track on my notes. Uh, so again, I know this conference is, again, of, uh, has a lot of, you know, in, uh, international implications. Um, I just think, um, certainly realizing that, that grand solutions can be, can be started on, on a local uh, level. Uh, I can, again, I'm not, certainly would not stand here and never say White Plains is, 
a perfect police department, but I can tell you that we, we strive to, to be as fair and honest uh, to everybody in the community. I, I think that's what we do. And, and although, uh, you know, ethnicity matters and religion matters and nationality and, and uh, orientation and political affiliation, they matter to a certain degree if we treat everybody fairly, if we treat everybody honestly, um, if we treat everybody professionally at that high level, um, I, I think that's what, what makes, what gives the police department its authority um, with the people, that they are going to accept that we're going to do the right thing. Um, I just want to, again, um, thank, thank the, uh, um, uh, the center for inviting us. I think it's great that, again, kind of in the, in, the, in, the, in the style of what Noah did, um, you know, you were, you were from a, a, another city, you moved your officers into White Plains and contacted the police department and said, hey, let's do something together. Uh, would you like to be a part of this? Um, we want to be a part of the community. We want, we want to um, um, have everybody understand that we are a part of the community. We want to reach out. We do a lot of reaching out. We especially appreciate it when people reach out to us. When, when organizations reach out to us and say, hey, let's be partners. So um, again, um, I, I appreciate it. This has been um, um, uh, a, a great honor for me to have been invited here for you know, representing White Plains and, and law enforcement in general. Uh, and I, I just want to thank you for your time. And I hope uh, uh, you got something out of it from my, as at least something informative. So thank you again very much. And uh, thank you for listening.